come forward for the children's time. All right, good morning. Good morning. And according to the bulletin, it is an honor for me to be Miss Carol today. So I am I will try to live up the best I can, okay? All right. This morning I have something with me. Any guys know what this is? It's a case. I got it in nineteen ninety four. How many of you guys remember nineteen ninety four? There's a few. There's right Dr. Rod. There's a few in here that do, right? Very few. It's a briefcase. And uh, got one problem. Can't get it open. Oh, oh, I mean, I see, I see what's I the code? Code on. Well, but I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I know the code. What? How? How do you think I could open that case if I don't know the code? God gave us a clue. God gave us a clue. That's pretty good. I don't know that He's into opening briefcases, but we could try it. What if I like maybe took a screwdriver and a hammer? I could probably pop it open, right? Probably. What if I took it up there and tossed it off the balcony and it hit this concrete down here and it pop open? Could maybe, maybe throw it out on the road? Huh? It's hard metal? Sledgehammer, that would work. But what happens if I would try to force that open? What does it do to the briefcase? It doesn't make it very useful again, does it? It probably would mess it up. I just sat in the thing. Let me see if I, I remember some kind of, let me see. Let me try this. Mm. Um. Let's see if I remember a partial number. I'm kind of thinking. It. See, I've had it a long time, so I can't remember. Let's see if that works. No, nope, that don't work. So, any other ways you think I can open it? No other ways. What if I took a saw and sawed it in half? I could saw it. I have to do on that side, all right? We have a damage. It. Let's see. I think of some more numbers here. I'm trying to think. Okay, wait a minute. Let me take my time here. I'm thinking about it. Try to turn that to a. Try to turn the middle one to a two there. Let me see. Let's see if that kind of something's coming back to me from a long time ago. Go to a two. Let's see. Let me see here. Let's see if we can. All right. Now let's see if it'll open. Let's try it. Try to pull them open. Look at that. Oh, no. Try that. Look at there. It opens up. That's right. It's empty. It's empty. But, you know, I wanted to put something inside. Could be useful, right? It's empty, but I wanted to put something inside. I wanted to put this Bible inside of it. So now I've got the Bible inside there, you know. And so I was thinking the other day that Brother Rob, he, he spoke to us, and he said he was stomping on some toes, and, and it kind of stomped on mine a little bit. He said we... And, it, and it's not Brother Rob's word, it's God's word. He said, we are charged with bringing people to Christ, right? And I was thinking to myself, I have that briefcase, and I was thinking, you know, we can kind of be like that briefcase. We're kind of hard to open up, right? Hard to open up. And generally when we get forced to be opened up, we don't really like it too much, or we're, in, we're just kind of damaged, right? You guys are just playing with a briefcase, not even listening. I got one listening. But can we not be like that briefcase? We're kind of hard to open up, aren't we? Right. But if we take our time and maybe figure out our combo or other people's combo when we're talking about, we talk about the combination to open the briefcase, what about the combination to find something in common to get somebody to open up to you? What are some things that we make a do if we're talking about to somebody about Christ or even opening up to Christ ourselves? What are some things we can do? Tough question, isn't it? But say there's somebody and we have something in common. Maybe they like to go fishing and you decide, hey, let's go fishing. You know, they don't go to church, but they want to go fishing. Maybe you go to fishing and then you, then, then you allow them to come to church with you or then maybe they'll come to church with you. So there's lots of things we can do. We just have to find that combination. And I want to read from Ephesians uh, 4, verse 11, chapter 13. I left my phone there. I need that Bible now. I was right here. We've got to open it up again. I knew this would be a train wreck because I made it up. 
I just knew it. All right, all right, that's right. Don't turn that one. Right, we got one open. Let's try it again. See there, we're finding the combo. Six two three upside down is a nine, though, right? Yeah, there you go. All right, so I'm gonna read from Ephesians four, chapter eleven. All right, let's stop playing with the preacher. Right. Train wreck. Here we go. John Davis <laughs> doing good. All right, Ephesians four, starting at eleven, he says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So this is the King James Version. It's got a lot of tricky. I had the better one on my phone, but got to do what you got to do. So my point is this morning is, again, we can be like that briefcase. We cannot want to open up to God. We can have others we know that are lost, that are difficult to open up to God. But if we take our time and maybe find some things in common with those folks and talk to those folks and even amongst ourselves, it's a lot easier for us to open up if we take our time and find that combination that works, right? Okay? So maybe you got a little bit of something out of that this morning even though you're yawning and everybody's lost an hour of sleep. And yes, Miss Ruth, I did all those things. No power ball game, the whole, whole shebang. But anyway, let's pray, all right? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you for the message uh, that uh, Brother Rob delivered to us uh, a week or so ago, dear Lord. We just uh, ask that you uh, help us be op more open to you. Uh, help us also to find that combination that helps us witness to others, dear Lord. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, thank you. I wouldn't call that a train wreck, John. That was a that was you working hard to unlock the mysteries of the faith. Did you see what I did there? Yeah. Okay. Um now is the time in the service where we offer our praises and prayer concerns for one another. So I invite you now, if you have a praise or a prayer concern, please share them with us. Yes. Certainly keep Miss Wynamia in our prayers. Are there others? Praise the Lord for back-to-back -back state titles for the Lady Rebels. And prayers for the, the boys in hopes that they will do the same thing. Are there others? Valerie Haynes. Certainly keep her in our prayers. Are there others? Remember Sarah Stone. Are there others? If not, then at this time, uh, let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you humbled by your love and mercy today. Uh, Lord, we are grateful that you have called us into this place and this hour to worship you. And though we come tired, though we come uh, maybe a bit disheveled from having to get ready in the dark, Lord, we know that you are here with us. And we rejoice in that truth today. We celebrate your goodness and your love and your grace. And God, we confess we have not been as faithful as you would have us be. 
we have put ourselves first. Uh, we have been distracted by life and its highs and lows. And Lord, our prayer today is that you would help us to refocus. Help us to turn away from our brokenness and find you in the midst of the chaos. That we might, in this hour, know your peace. That we might be revived by your Holy Spirit and that you would empower us to be your church and the disciples that you have called us to be. God, we lift up to you today our many needs, those on our prayer list, those throughout the world who are hurting, those uh, who are overwhelmed by grief and sorrow, those who are sick and afflicted by illness and injury. God, you know every struggle, every trial, and every burden, and you can do all things. You are the great physician who can heal all ailments. You are our comforter and our strength. You are our abiding source of peace and grace and mercy. And so we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon those on our prayer list, those on our hearts today, that they would know your presence, that they would feel your healing and your strength and your love. Now, Lord, hear us as we pray as Jesus taught his disciples in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now at this time, if our ushers would come, let us worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Once again, let us pray. God, again, we come before you humbled by your grace and your mercy, for Lord, you are good, and you have been good to us, and we acknowledge your goodness today, and we celebrate it, we rejoice in it, and we come before you with a portion of the blessings you have poured out upon us, and we pray that you would take and use them. God, Not that not just this offering, but that all that we have and all that we are might be an offering before you. Lord, that you would use us to build up your kingdom, that you would uh, show us the way in which we could share your love in this community and that we could build up your kingdom for your glory. For we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we continue singing this morning?
Would you please remain standing for the reading of God's word? As always, it is an honor and a privilege for me to be able to share God's word with you. Our scripture this morning comes from John's Gospel in the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So we find ourselves continuing on in this journey of the I am statements of Jesus. And we come to I am the gate or I am the door, depending upon the translation you're reading. Uh, Right, and you'll find my fun little icon is a little door there. And it opens that way because I'm left-handed and wanted it to open that way. Um, But, uh, uh, you know, so we, we find this image Jesus uses to describe himself. But also it tells us a lot about who we are as followers of Jesus. He paints a picture for us of a sheepfold, right? It's it's a a, a corral, if you will, where the sheep would rest at night. Uh, And if they were in an urban environment uh, near a city and not out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere, but they find themselves in a city, then this sheepfold would have been you know, constructed with a, a gate and high walls, and there would have been a guard there to, to let people in and out so thieves and robbers would not come and steal other shepherds' sheep. But we see this image in our mind, and, and we have to remember that out in the countryside, away from the city, there would have been a sheepfold as well. It would have had much lower walls, right? Maybe a rock or two rocks high, just enough to, to discourage the sheep from wandering off, right? And there would have been an opening where they could come in and go out. And the shepherd would lead his flock into the sheepfold through this doorway, through this opening in the wall. There would be four walls and an opening. And they would, they would lead their way through this opening. And the shepherds in the city, the, the gatekeeper would, would know them. They would be familiar with them, right? They would welcome them and recognize them by name as they came in and brought their sheep in. But, you know, I read an account of a pastor once who, who, who went to the, the Middle East and, and there they traveled and, 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 and they encountered this this ancient style of shepherding as a part of the culture there. And, and as the shepherd, uh, you know, demonstrated what a daily work life was for, was about. And, and, and they, they walked around and the, the pastor looked at him and he goes, well, where's the gate? You know, where's the door on this pen? What keeps the sheep from just wandering out the door they came in? And the shepherd said, I am the door. That's what Jesus means here when he says, I am the gate, I am the door. The shepherd would lay down in that opening so that in order for the sheep to leave the pen, to leave that corralled area, they would have to walk over the shepherd and they would uh, alert him, right? Nothing gets in without going over the shepherd. That's That's the illustration Jesus gives us here when he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, 
he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. This is what Jesus is telling us, that we are his sheep and he is our shepherd. He is what stands between us and being lost. He is what stands between us and what's out there that would seek to destroy us. The thief, as you will, that seeks to destroy and kill that Jesus illustrates for us. And so we journey through this season of repentance and prayer and fasting and we hear these sayings, you know, Jesus says, I am the bread and I am the light of the world. But then he says this, I am the door. I am the gate. What are we supposed to do with this? How are we supposed to apply this? The bread of life makes sense. Jesus sustains us and nourishes us. That one makes sense. The light of the world even makes sense, right? Jesus is the light amidst the darkness of the brokenness of this world. But the door and the gate, this is the one that we, we kind of get hung up on, one we might struggle with. The next one, which is the verses that immediately follow this, is kind of this same illustration that Jesus uses that we'll look at next week, is the good shepherd, but we're not there yet. But he says, I am the door. That tells us that Jesus is our protection. His love, his grace, and his mercy are what protect us from the brokenness that exists outside in the world. From the sin that would tempt us. From the thieves and robbers who would seek to lead us astray. He tells the disciples that all who came before me were thieves and robbers. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. He's talking about those false prophets and those in the world who would proclaim that they know better than what Jesus is instructing the disciples. In in, in other words, he's making clear that the sheep didn't listen to them. The true sheep, the true lambs of God, those who would seek him out. Because they know his voice. They didn't listen. They weren't led astray. Uh, Even to this day, you know, this is the way shepherds work in the the Middle East. This is how they they keep their sheep. This, This technology has not changed this practice a whole lot, right? And if you were to go to the Middle East today and you were to to find a shepherd and and pay him some money to say, let me put your clothes on and try to steal your sheep, he would do it because they will not follow you. They do not recognize your voice. You smell different. There is something fundamentally, fundamentally different about you than the shepherd that they know, and they feel safe and secure with the shepherd that they know. This is the point Jesus is making. See, we know our shepherd. He has led us to a place of safety, to the sheepfold. He is the means by which we have entered this place of safety. He is the means by which we will go out from this place of safety to the pasture and be fed and have life and life in abundance. It is only through Jesus that we can experience true security and it's only through Jesus that we can experience true abundance of life. That is the point he's making to us and to his disciples. That is what he's trying to drive home and help us understand and wrap our brain around when he says, I am am the door you come in to the fold of security through me that's salvation brothers and sisters but then he says you go out to the abundance of life through me that's the holy spirit the problem is none of us ever really muster up the courage to go out, do we? But it's important that he includes that in here. Yes, you enter through the shepherd, but you leave through the shepherd as well. 
We might walk through these doors, and we like to think that, that in the fold is where we need to be, right? We need to be in that place of safety and security. But the sheep were only there at night for their protection. During the day, they would go out to pasture, and the shepherd would work tirelessly to lead them to uh, sources of abundant uh, grass and, uh, where they could graze and, and, and be fed and, and have their fill and lead them to safe place where they can get water to sustain, sustain themselves. And then at night they would return back to the sheepfold and there they would be safe. In a way, brothers and sisters, this is our sheepfold that we gather in week after week. We come to this place and we come together as one. And we come not because we're obligated to or because we're looking for something else. But we come because we are seeking that voice of the shepherd. We need that place of quiet rest where we can be restored and rejuvenated and where we can, can have energy to go out once again and live an abundant life. We come here through the door, past the veil, into the very presence of God. For all that's what worship's all about. You know, this morning I was, I was scrambling a bit, as many of us were. Getting ready in the dark is a challenge, by the way. Um, I, I've discovered this. Luckily, I don't have to put on makeup, or it would have been much harder, because um, it would take a lot to cover this ugly up. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I, luckily I don't have to do that. But as I was getting ready this morning, I was thinking, what if the power doesn't come back on by 9 o'clock? What are we going to do? And I scrambled, and I, I grabbed a few things from the house, and it's, it's, it's all sitting back here just in case. I have a cajon, which, for those of you who don't know, it's a box you sit on and you bang on for drums. Andy was excited about the prospect of getting to use that. He didn't get to because the lights came back on. Uh, I had my guitar, and, and I was ready to worship in the, light, in, in the light or in the dark. It doesn't matter. We can worship God just the same whether we have power or whether we don't. We like to think we can't without electricity, right? Well, there's no lights, there's no screens, there's no microphone. How are we supposed to hear? How are we supposed to worship? How are we supposed to see our bulletins? How are we supposed to do this? And we forget that for like 1,900 years the church did this without electricity, without any problem, week after week after week. And we get so caught up in the production of our worship that we think that that's what we're here for. But it's not. It doesn't matter whether we have uh, a piano and an organ and a guitar and drum set and, and, and a dozen mic singers and, and, and everything. You know, we could have the best uh, choir we could come up with behind us, singing with us, and, and all of that. is no more praiseworthy than one voice in the darkness praising God. Because it's not about what we do and how good it is. It's about our heart and us seeking our Savior. It's about letting everything else in this world fade away and coming to a place of safety and rest and security and just forgetting about all of it and focusing on God for just a moment, if for just a moment. And in those moments, we find God pours His Holy Spirit out upon us and we are filled, restored and renewed, ready to go out unafraid, as we follow our shepherd out into the world, that he would lead us to an abundant life. Because he will, brothers and sisters. If we're seeking to have abundance in our own strength, in our own ability, one, we don't really understand what that abundant life looks like. But two, we'll never truly have it. There are so many accounts of, of people who have untold wealth, 
and, 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 and they're, they're depressed, they're sad, they're, they're heartbroken, right? They have everything, they got fame, they got power, they got wealth, they got everything this world could possibly offer them. And yet there is so many stories you could read uh, of, of folks in that situation who have this emptiness inside them. There is this hole in their life that no amount of money or fame can fill. That's because the abundance of life doesn't come through fame or fortune. The abundance of life only comes through the Holy Spirit. So today, brothers and sisters, let us hear these words of Jesus once again. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And all who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Today, brothers and sisters, Christ offers us that abundant life. We can't find it anywhere else. We won't find it in our friends or our family. We won't find it on social media. We won't find it in our work. We won't find it in our recreation. You can't find it on the lake or on the golf course. It is only found through the door, through Jesus himself. So today, let us have that life that he offers us. Life abundantly. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you now humbled. For Lord, you have called us out of the depths of our brokenness and our sin into this place. And now, Lord, our prayer is that you would help us to overcome that brokenness. Help us to live life to its fullest in you Lord that we would not waste a day or an opportunity but that we would be forever changed by your grace and your mercy thank you Lord for loving us and for giving us your son for we pray all of this in Jesus name Amen as the praise team makes their way down, brothers and sisters, if you would, uh, let us surrender ourselves now to God. Let us come into his fold. Let us feel that safety and security that the Holy Spirit might wash over us and that as we sing, we might be fed and sustained and nourished and strengthened and ready and able to go out and to find life in abundance. I invite you, if you would, stand and join as we sing.
and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and always. And as we go, may we go filled with the Holy Spirit, ready and willing to share the good news of Christ with all who would hear it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us lift up our praise together as we sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Pray. 